Welcome back to the channel guys. So today join us with part two of mine and Julian's adventure in Lemington National Park. Just like the previous part, we're going to be doing a little bit of off-track exploration and viewing some compositions that we've seen in the past. But super excited to share this part with you guys because we really find some amazing off-track gems towards the end of this video. So I really hope you guys stay tuned and I really hope that you enjoy the images. Without further ado, let's get right to it. So we're coming towards the end of the border track, guys, and Julian is complaining about being cold. Of all people, I wouldn't expect him to be the one complaining, you know? He's the one who uh, dragged me out at this time, uh, this early time in the morning. So I'm gonna try and make him suffer a little bit, because, you know, he said he needs to be home for lunch. So he's still got a few hours out here with me. It's currently, what is that? 8 10 in the morning so that means with about an hour and a half two hour walk back Julian's still got another two hours out here with me and we're gonna spend that whole time taking photos oh it's gonna be wonderful gotta love it but we're gonna head down the Toluna trailhead I reckon capture some more nice off-track beauties probably visit one of Julian's favorite compositions that he found for himself even actually put it in the Natural Landscape Photography Awards and he did pretty well. He did pretty well. And he, and he definitely should have because it was a great photo. So we'll head over to that one and hopefully find some more compositions around that area because there's some really nice Antarctic beech trees in that area. And this fog is fleeting, but it's here and thin. So it's creating a nice atmosphere around us. And here we go around the Faluna Trailhead. And down we go! You can already see Julian is just beaming with anticipation. Just look at him go, as motivated as ever. Gotta love it, gotta love it. <laughs> oh, maybe we'll even do a little dance when we get to the... Oh, what? 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 Where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> oh, gotta love good old Julian, gotta love him. Well, I'll catch up with you guys if we find a composition or if we find a nice scene. Alrighty guys, got the next shot framed up. We've been probably about a few hundred meters down the Toluna Trailhead and I found a scene that I've walked past quite a few times on this track and every time I've sort of half tried to take a photo of it and not really put in much effort. And today I looked at it and I had my wide angle lens on the camera and I thought I can do something with that because I never actually noticed that there were other, or obviously other trees around it, but there was another tree that was really complementing its figure, so if I shoot it wide enough, I can get both of them in the frame. So I'll show you what I'm working with here. So this is the tree that I'd originally seen before, and in the past, I would have just shot it individually, probably as a vertical composition. It's an all right shot, but it's just a tree at the end of the day. But if you shoot it extra wide, you're also able to get this one in here in the frame. And together, those work quite nicely, because they have this log passing down the middle of the frame, which really adds to it, and on top of that, you have these ones snaking in that lead you into the frame. Then in the middle, top it all off, there's another tree way back there in the fog, which will hopefully be able to highlight in the image, but on the back of the camera, this is what we're working with. It's getting a bit foggy at this point. Might need to wipe down my camera's lens, but you have that nice leading line and the two trees on either side. It's a bit blown out in the front, so I'll fix that up by wiping off the lens. And, of course, the tripod is very precariously positioned. Just give it a little... <laughs> That's as stable as it gets for a tripod right there. 10 second timer all the way. So we'll go ahead and capture this one because Julian wants to use my wide angle lens and he's moping over there until I finish this piece to camera. Look at him. So upset. <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and capture this one. I'll put it up for you guys. And, of course, let me know what you think. Spot, guys, Julian's favorite tree in all of Lamington National Park, and it is quite an amazing one. You guys would have seen it from a little bit of footage I just put just before, and you probably might even recognize it if you've seen my previous Lamington video, because both me, Julian, and Michael were here, except last time I was here I was shooting it in IR Chrome. Today, 
We're just using the normal camera because I don't actually have a shot of it in visible light. So I figured I might as well get one. And of course, Julian wants to borrow my lens to give it a go. I didn't actually end up giving him the lens for the last shot because he didn't think it looked that good with a wide angle lens. So he's probably going to steal mine for this one. But I'll show you what I got framed up in the back. It's pretty much exactly the same as the photo that Julian took. So credit to him for this one. It's his shot. But I want a copy of it as well. So this is what we have framed up here on the back of the camera. Such an awesome scene. It's got that line leading into the front of the into the middle of the scene from the from the fallen tree branch right there where Julian is. And on top of that, in that little triangle right there, you have two tree fern three tree ferns which are framed up in that one. Looks absolutely amazing. And then on the left side to even balance it out. There's another one right there between the trees, just poking through. And then, above all else, this amazing Antarctic beech tree with just this filtered light passing through a light fog over top of it. Absolutely amazing scene. And I'm really excited to be able to capture this one in visible light, because I've sort of been meaning to for a while, ever since uh, I saw Julian's copy of it. So, we're going to go ahead and shoot this one. Uh, what are we going to shoot at? 4 seconds, f11, ISO 160, that should be alright, that should be alright. And we'll go ahead and hit the shutter button here, and I'll put that one up for you guys to see, and I hope you like it. So we got our next shot framed up guys. We left Julian's favorite tree and we went back up the track and we've sort of went up the track back where we were taking the photo before that one. And we went a bit further up, found some quite nice trees and currently we are both taking the same shot because we found quite a nice scene. I'll flip around for you guys and show you what's on the back of the camera. So this is what we have here and as Julian just said to me the fog is really starting to come in, which is wonderful because we weren't expecting this today. We were expecting relatively clear skies, so this is a, a nice little surprise. It means we'll be getting some decent photos throughout the whole day. It's not just a scouting day. So this is the scene that we have framed up here with these two trees that are just forking right there. And we also have another one which is creating a nice little fork in that area, and that's framed by this darker tree passing up on the right side as well as all that greenery and stuff there and for the foreground we got some nice leafy grass plants or whatever you'd call them <laughs> got some nice nice foreground right in this area here and super simple point the camera at it take a shot shooting this one at around 26 millimeters so it probably looks exactly the same as Julian's but ours is gonna be better anyway because you know, we have a better camera. So we'll go ahead and capture this shot and I'll put it up for you guys and let me know what you think. And then we're gonna go ahead and capture photo right over there. Cause it's another one that I see that I might like. So yeah, let me know what you think. Alrighty guys, hope you enjoyed that shot. Got the hood on cause it's starting to rain a little bit. It's coming down just a tad but I've got the next shot framed up I've quite literally moved my tripod from there to there except now we're looking at this scene that we have right here where you have the two trees in the midground this big beautiful Antarctic beach in the background and this nice branch leading into the scene and just to top it all off we got a nice tree fern with a curved tree coming through it in the left side of the frame then on the right, you got these angled in trees right here, driving you into the center of the frame. And on the back of the camera, it's looking pretty nice. I'd say it's not one of my best shots I've ever done, but I think it'll turn out nice either way. Got the polarizer as well. Probably gonna polarize it just a little bit, just a little bit. And we'll go ahead, get the shot right there. Five second shutter because we are a little bit unstable where we are. And we'll go ahead and show you the shop. And let me know what you guys think. We 
We're definitely off track now, guys. We've gone probably a few hundred meters up one of the hills, just into absolute bush. Just been pushing through all of this crap. Absolutely leech city. Like, you do not even know. <laughs> but I've stopped. I found something that's sort of interesting, so I'm gonna capture a composition there. And just as I was framing the shot up, actually, I'll show you the shot first, then I'll get on to the other one. So the one that we have in front of us right now, that was a bunch of crap in the way, so I'm gonna have to pull it out of the frame, but essentially it's this one central uh, tree right here, which has some nice orange dead leaves in front of it. You probably can't see it in the recording, but I'm gonna try and enhance it in the edit and make it look a bit better. Then we have both this tree right here and this one right here framing it. The only thing that I'm not super crazy about is how it's sort of all on an angle going to the side. You see on the back of the camera, it really shows that angle, but you have this nice tree right here blocking the frame on that side, and you have this framing it up in the middle, and it just really brings the focus onto this center tree right here. And of course, you've got all this crap in the front right here, which we're going to have to get rid of, but that's just as easy as reaching up and pulling it to the side. So we'll go ahead, snap this shot, and yeah, let me know what you guys think. Now on to the next shot, guys. Literally, camera is right here. Next shot is right over there. And what I'm loving about this scene that I have in front of me, first off, Antarctic beech tree, just an amazing tree to take photos of in general. And what I noticed just out of the corner of my eye is this amazing tiny tree sort of just swirling out of the ground right here. And I think it has such a nice form to it because even then it just forks up in two different directions right there. So I haven't composed it yet, but what I'm thinking is sort of have maybe this here be the end of the frame and just go to there. But I'm not too sure how this tree right here is going to interact with this one in the frame. I might have to move a bit to the side over this way or a bit the other way because I really like the way that they're interacting. I might even actually have to stay where I am, but we'll set up the camera and we'll try and frame something up with this because I think there's a lot of potential here as well. So we got that shot framed up and it's pretty much exactly as I said. I moved the tripod maybe about 30 centimeters to the side and turned it to the right and we got the shot there. I went ahead, put the crop on the camera to 16x9 just to give it that sort of pano effect because I think that's what we're going to want to go for just because it's feeling a bit wide at the moment but if I zoom in I'm losing a lot of the bottom and the top which are nice to have in the frame. So you show, I'll show you what it looks like on the back of the camera and you might agree with me. So this is what we're working with here on the back of the camera and the only crap thing about it is we have this branch poking in which is just this one right here but I'll pull that out of the way. But on the back of the camera it's looking pretty nice. We have that nice twisting tree right there in the frame and you have the larger Antarctic beach right there. It's just the issue is is that it feels very wide on the sides but on the top and bottom if I zoom in I'm losing a lot of that. In fact it might even be a good idea to crop it to 4x5 or something like that but we'll see how I feel when I come to the actual edit. But for now we're just going to go ahead take the shot make sure that we're focused correctly Go ahead, take that shot, and with the 10 second timer, just pull that bad boy out of the way. And take the shot. I can see Julian giving me the giving me the eye down from below on the hill. I think he wants I think he wants to get going. <laughs> Oh, I, well, I don't blame him. This is so many beaches. Okay guys, so I just took that photo and then I moved a little bit further forward to that curving tree that I, that I mentioned before. And I found a composition with the wide angle lens that I am so happy with. I pretty much just pushed right up in front of it. I've tried to get all of it in focus because it has these lovely details on the branch of moss and leaves and lichen. Oh, you bastard. Let's be in my hand. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, Julian just put a leech on my hand. Nice guy. Um, back to the composition. <laughs> What's wrong with you? 
That guy's got issues, man. He's got issues. But anyway, what I got framed up, because it's looking nicer and nicer when I look on the back of my camera. We have this curving tree right here taking up most of the frame with the branch that it's coming out of. Just right here. And we're creating a really nice distorted effect to make it look really dramatic and wide. And we still have... Oh, my screen just died. And we still have these trees on the right framing it in. It's just a little bit open on that side, but I'm sure we'll be able to live with it. Because this is quite a nice scene. I'm probably never going to actually see this tree again because it's an off-track thing and I tend to forget these kinds of things. <laughs> so we'll go ahead, snap the shot. We're shooting at 1 30th of a second, ISO 1600, because we don't want any of these leaves to be shaking. And we want to capture all of this beautiful detail right here in the branch because it's so lovely. So we'll go ahead, capture the shot, and then we can get back the trail for poor Julian who has to go home soon. Poor guy. Whew, back on the trail. Back on the trail. So that concludes that off track portion of the trip, guys. We're back on the trail and heading back in the direction of O'Reilly's now. We just stopped off at one of, one of my favorite compositions from the past. You can actually find it on my website. I'll put it up right here for you to look at. It's one of my favorite images. And if you want to check out the print shop that has it in there, the link will be in the description. But Julian is just going ahead and capturing that image as well because it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Look at him go. And I'll show you guys exactly what it is right here right now because it's perfect conditions for it just a little bit of fog just looks absolutely wonderful guys so we're back at the spot where this whole video started and where Julian wanted to shoot that sunrise image a lot's happened since we left that spot we've got some great images but I think it's about time to finish the video and head back to the cars because it feels definitely like it's time for some coffee and a little bit of food so I have put my 100 to 400 on my camera and just at the slight chance that when we're walking back, we see a dingo, I'll be ready to capture it. But that's probably the last thing that'll be in this video. If I don't see a dingo, this is going to be the end of the video. But if I do, I'll throw it in. But don't get your hopes up. That's like extremely unlikely. Extremely unlikely. But anywho, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys liked the photos. And if you'd like to see more of my work, check out the description. I got a link there to my portfolio as well as my print shop. You can get some prints there if you're interested in that sort of thing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment.